Good morning, dear listeners. I'm glad that you're interested in machine learning and distributed systems, especially, especially the issues of optimizing hyperparameters and building uh, ensembles of machine learning models and so on. For the last uh, six years, I've studied the source code of different distributed distributed machine learning projects such as Mahout, Horovod, MLLib, and Spark, and so on. And for the last three years, I have participated in Apache Ignite open source project creating a distributed machine learning module. And I met 100 commits in Apache Ignite repository for the last three years, mainly in Apache Ignite ML model, but not only. And now I work at JetBrains company, but I continue to support and develop a distributed machine learning library as a part of Apache Ignite. Uh, I need to say a few words, what is this presentation about? It's not an introduction in IgniteML module. Please watch the next video. I will share on the next screen from ApacheCon from the previous year. But in this presentation, I will focus um, mainly on the benefits of Apache IgniteML or the across distributed ML framework like Apache Spark ML. I mean two main features, hyperparameter optimization and ensemble models. Uh, this is a presentation we, that covers basic functionality of IgniteML, but we will go deeply today. Let's take a look at a machine learning problem from a mathematical point of view. It will be a few pieces of math, sorry for that, but I like that. ML tasks shortly, uh, it could be described as a search of best set of parameters for function f. And we have an assumption about f function time type there is uh, w is a set of unknown parameters x inputs and a y output let's move on uh, to the problem of finding um, the best hyperparameters in mathematical form it will be hard but it's only just one mathematical slide here uh, this is our hpo hyperparameter optimization task in mathematical description it could be formulated as a bi-level or two-level optimization problem. There, the optimal parameters, optimal parameters on the training set depend on hyperparameters. And later, I will uh, give uh, I will give some definitions how to differ uh, model parameters from hyperparameters. Uh, a bi-level optimization problem consists uh, of two sub-problems called. Uh, called the upper level and low level problems. There, the upper level, uh, upper level and lower level problems, uh, uh, there the upper level problem could be solved uh, subject to the optimal solution of low level pro problem, uh, like uh, presented uh, on this slide. Now, I, I will explain uh, two equations here. Uh, they are bound to each other, uh, lambda and w, hyperparameters and parameters, respectively. Lambda with asterisk, this is optimal hyperparameters. Uh, and we want to find the optimal hyperparameters uh, with subjection on the uh, best response of the parameters to the fixed hyperparameters, pass it to the low level. Uh, LV and LT, this is a trading loss and validation loss, respectively, too. Okay, uh, bi-level programs uh, were first studied uh, in economics a uh, few uh, decades ago, uh, like uh, maybe maybe somebody uh, familiar with model of leader follower uh, in uh, firm analysis from von Stackelberg game. And machine learning, it's very popular too. Many problems can be formulated this way as bi-level programs, for example, HPO task, uh, which presented uh, in this presentation, and uh, GIAN training uh, uh, presented by Goodfellow and his works, this very popular topic too, meta learning, and of course, the search of optimal neural network architecture too. This is the same problem which could be solved the same way. And if you have an experience in solution of one of them, you could easily move to another. Uh, Okay, even the search space uh, for the optimal values of two hyperparameters uh, can be quite complex, like here. This search requires uh, the use of special mathematical methods from optimization theory. Uh, each three-dimensional point 
in this image corresponds to the values of two hyperparameters along the x and y axis uh, uh, and the value of the metric or loss function uh, along uh, z, z x for training the, the fixed values of hyperparameters. Uh, but machine learning doesn't end with finding model parameters. Let's take a look at the machine learning process uh, or pipeline from start to finish. Uh, the first of all, uh, we have a distributed pipeline which starts from the data loading from the raw data and this raw data could be for example in ignite caches or in ignite sql and after that raw data are transformed into the vector format special mathematical format in memory uh, via intermediate data handling known as pre-processing where vector contains only doubles not uh, any raw data like strings or floats or integers only doubles because machine learning models like only double values or maybe floats are uh, to to transform them or uh, to predict on them to build the model on them and etc and doesn't contain for example missed values or strings and after that we train the model on the vector data sometimes uh, we need to repeat our training process again and again to find the best set of parameters and these specific parameters are known as hyperparameters the quality of the build model could be evaluated um, before deploying uh, in the production environment via metric calculation there are many different metrics um, for binary classification tasks for regression for clustering for multi-classification tasks and so on all these steps are distributed in IgniteML library and a significant part of calculation are parallelized for the highest uh, cluster resource utilization. utilization. Or for example, we could train a few models in parallel during cross-validation. This is a feature of IgniteML2. Uh, it's time to define uh, what is the hyperparameter correctly. Data scientists train models by running training algorithms. There are many different ways to build, for example, linear regression model or a decision tree model. And each training algorithm has several tunable settings, the values of which can be changed before a training starts. And every value can affect the final model. Let's keep in mind that such, such um, settings are known uh, as hyperparameters and uh, mm, that the task of a value search for optimal hyperparameters is known as HPO, HPO task. Maybe later we we'll use this term into this presentation, like hyperparameter optimization problem. Uh, let's start from the basic definition. What is and what is not a hyperparameter? Uh, newbies in ML are, are often confused about the model parameters and hyperparameters of training algorithm. Model parameters are learned during training. You define it during training as a result of training, uh, and this is a, what model is. But the hyperparameter on the opposite side, on the contrary, must be set uh, by a data scientist manually or by AutoML or before training or via different approaches, which uh, part of them will be discussed uh, later. A good example of model parameters is a slope uh, and intercept in a linear regression or a they tensor in the convolutional layer in neural network. And we are trying to find the best parameters during one training. And the opposite side, the initial learning rate, for example, in SGD, to high gradient descent optimization algorithm, or a number of trees and random forest algorithm uh, widely used to should be defined before training. All these examples are hyperparameter. If you define something before training, and this is known uh, at the start of training, this is a hyperparameter. If you want to learn something, this is a model parameter. Uh, a good uh, 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 I, gu I guess uh, we can move we can move on uh, to the next slide and let's list our, all the currently available IgniteML training algorithms and the algorithms tunable hyperparameters. Uh, each of uh, supported our 
ML algorithm has uh, between three or ten uh, in this range uh, a, a number of hyperparameters. Only uh, two or three of algorithms uh, ha has only zero of hyperparameters. Uh, you should understand that we have a lot of different uh, degrees of freedom in our, our model building here and currently the framework contains enough implementation of classical machine learning algorithms and data preprocessing methods to be comparable with Apache Spark ML Leap, for example the scikit-learn or widely known Python ML library and uh, we have logistic regression, SVM, KNN, approximate nearest neighborhood, uh, decision trees, random forest uh, kind of ensemble method uh, uh, at the top of decision trees and etc. And of course we have a lot of regression algorithms, sorry for misprint on this slide, uh, regression algorithms we should read uh, the header uh, and if you prefer to predict values instead of class labels uh, we have our KNN regression, linear regression with different trainers. We could build the linear regression by, via, via different ways, decision tree regression, random forest and gradient boosted tree regression and so on and each of them as I said has uh, an average five hyperparameters which could be set up before the training and of course we have our basic uh, neural networks uh, they are supported too and you could model any function or distribution due to the power of non-linearity in activation functions we support different uh, non-linear activation functions too. And for example, uh, let's take a look uh, at the neural networks. The distributed multilayer perceptron has many hyperparameters like, uh, you, you know, you could build a lot of different dense layers uh, one by one. Uh, they could have different activations functions and this is a kind of hyperparameters. You could switch between different last functions, how to calculate, how your model is good. Um, max iterations, local iterations, batch size, seed, and another settings for internally used SGD stochastic gradient descent optimizer uh, and so on. There are a lot of them. It's about the 10 for their uh, neural network building, for example. Uh, we uh, can go forward to, to the uh, training models. It's very similar uh, to training models in like in scikit-learn and we use Ignite caches to extract our, the in-memory data to build the partition-based data sets, which is much more effect, effective uh, for vector and matrix operations than Ignite in-memory caches and SQL tables because we could operate on the uh, whole vectors together, which are, which are uh, located in memory together and these data sets are ML specific you couldn't reuse them are uh, outside the ML module and it creates internally you have no special access like in pandas uh, but you should know and keep in mind this term like partition based data set this internal specifically uh, ML module structure which created in the memory when you will debug ML algorithm you will face with that and first of all, let's fill the cache with the data, for example, reading from the CC file or copying from database, uh, etc. And after that, make label it vectors, vectors with labels of class, for example, from raw data in caches. After that, uh, we define the trainer decision trees, for, like uh, in this slide, with five in constructor like uh, it's kind of hyperparameter here. This is a max deep of tree, which could be built during the training and uh, you could choose different values for these hyperparameters so for example run the training with different values like four like five like i don't know ten and choose the best model here mm, uh, you could estimate your model with evaluation uh, metrics but uh, we will discuss it in the next slides uh, of course we should combine ignite instance, cache, and vectorizer, which create vectors together to train the model in the theta method. And after that, we could uh, estimate accuracy, for example, or you could you could calculate another metric. We have a lot of them on the IgniteML. I think all popular metrics are presented here. Um, 
uh, you could calculate accuracy to estimate to evaluate your model and decide uh, how is good uh, your hyperparameters which were injected to the trainer in this uh, example. Uh, in the research phase of any machine learning project, uh, hyperparameter tuning can be done manually. I agree with that. Uh, that does it, but however, when you want to take the project to the next level in the production, the real production, it's highly effective to automate this process. Let's discuss uh, in the next chapters the basic techniques that could help to estimate the model quality. For example, to calculate accuracy. Uh, first of all, you should be able to calculate different metrics, and we support a lot of them, as I said, uh, this uh, here you could find only classification metrics, but regression metrics are supported too. And I think in the next release, uh, the uh, different uh, metrics for uh, evaluation of clustering algorithms will be delivered too. Uh, so it's not a good practice to learn and validate uh, the model parameters on the same data. And I want to share yet one tip uh, how to avoid the overfitting of this specific effect Then your model overfits is bad in many cases. And the most uh, efficient, efficient solution here is to save and use part of the training data as a test set. And this technique like a test train splitting uh, is supported in Apache Ignite ML too, but it's not the real splitting of the data set or uh, caches. This is a special filter uh, which filters the data that is stored in a cache into two parts. It's like a logical predicate. Uh, it's performed according to particular conditions. Uh, you could define them or use uh, pre-built. Uh, in reality, no data transfer or network shuffle during this splitting. Uh, it's only logical filter which will be lazy evaluated during the um, evaluation phase or training phase, etc. And all fit methods have a parameter, special parameter for this filter, um, and you, uh, that pa um, this parameter passes a filter condition to each cache lower, lower. Uh, uh, the user, uh, like on this slide, can use um, uh, to call the method from the train test splitter. He, he, could, he could call get train filter or he could call get test filter and pass it uh, to, for example, to the cache uh, to calculate uh, manually uh, different metrics or pass to the evaluate method to evaluator are to calculate different, uh, for example, accuracy, like on this slide, uh, um, on their uh, test uh, data set, which uh, will not be created, as I said. Uh, it will be only filter. Uh, uh, a few rows will be filtered, and uh, only data from them will participate in calculation of metric. Uh, this is very important to know. Uh, for performance reasons. Okay, okay. This is very, very ancient technique, uh, but we have a few modern for that. Uh, test train splitting helps, really helps to avoid overfitting. But however, uh, by partitioning the available data and excluding one or more subsets of the data from the training set, we significantly reduce the number of samples that are used to learn the model parameters. We could very easily to run uh, not on the whole data set, a few trainings, and this technique is known as cross-validation. And the cross-validation approach solves this problem, and the cross-validation object is the heart of hyperparameter tuning. Uh, let's discuss how Apache Ignite ML implements scaffold cross-validation. First of all, the training set is split into multiple or sub data set. The K parameter defines the number of sub data sets. IgniteML uses k, k minus one of the faults as training data and trains the model. And the resulting model is validated on the data that was not used for training at all. And of course, you could get a k results and they could be averaged to produce a single estimation or you could, uh, um, I don't know, calculate the max from this K results, or you could pass them uh, to the user and he could decide uh, what we, what he will do with them. Uh, 
it's your choice. You have a different approaches uh, supported in our cross-validation. And cross-validation objects support the parameterization uh, of trainer. What trainer should be validated? What metrics are uh, to be calculated for the model? What the number of faults uh, that uh, the training data should be split into? And of course, cross-validation uh, could um, work with our a splitting. For example, you want to split, like on this slide, your initial data set on the training set and use cross-validation only on that and keep the test set for the final validation. This is very uh, important technique. Uh, this is a very modern approach uh, to tune your hyperparameters to validate your final best hyperparameters on the test set to estimate your model. Uh, as I said, and this cross-validation object has a special method like tune hyperparameters. This is our magic magic method which could help you later. Okay, let's start uh, with a few coding slides. And the primary object that keeps all possible values of hyperparameters is the param grid object. On this slide, you could see the pipeline object that ties all pre-processing stages here, vectorizing, imputing of missing values, uh, mean max scalar, and uh, final trainer like decision tree. Uh, after uh, uh, that, uh, param grid encapsulates the logic of um, adding of two hyperparameters like max zip and mean impurity decrease for their um, decision tree classification trainer if you want uh, to inject two hyperparameters here and after the param grid object is created it this object param grid could be passed to the cross validation object via uh, the special method uh, which named the param grid method uh, on the next slide you will see it uh, on this slide we combine together our pipeline our data ignite instance uh, hyperparameters uh, in param grid, uh, and we could call the method tune hyperparameters to get the best model. It uh, sounds crazy, but uh, this uh, method solves uh, a lot of your problems. And uh, maybe you missed, uh, but in the previous slide, I used special parameter search strategy, new evolution optimization strategy. This is a kind of genetic algorithms, and we discuss uh, it in a few minutes. Uh, let's discuss how to define hyperparameter search space X. Firstly, um, we'll consider the basic HPO technique, uh, grid search or brute force. It, it could be known uh, on both names. And this approach, main idea is to run ML pipeline with all possible combinations of parameters to get the final metric scores. For example, uh, if you have uh, two parameters and each of them has two different rails, you will run four uh, different training runs. Uh, for example, if you have uh, two hyperparameters with 10 variants, uh, 10 multiply 10, it gives us uh, 100 training grants. If we increase the number of hyperparameters from two to from two to <laughs> five, uh, keeping 10 variants for each, uh, 10 multiply 10, multiple 10, multiple 10, multiple 10, uh, 100 of thousand training grants are completed. Doesn't believe in that. And I suppose that nobody would wait long enough for 100,000 training grants to finish. You will, uh, I think nobody have money to run it in Amazon, <laughs> etc. And of course, a uh, grid search works well only on a small number of hyperparameters and a very, very small range uh, for, of values for each of them. Uh, then, um, mm, Sorry. Uh, when I run hyperparameter tuning for scikit lore models for random search or brute force cases, I often wrote a handmade parallelization to run a portion of training with parallelization. Well, why I told about parallelization? Because I, I, I tried a lot of uh, many years how to reduce the CPU time, how to increase and speed up my uh, brute force uh, search. And the parallelization was the first idea how to speed up it. Another alternative method was the second idea. Let's discuss parallelization. 
I, for example, I was confused that a library such as HyperOpt, this is a most popular library for hyperparameter tuning, uses Apache Spark or MongoDB to run parallel training and does not have built-in parallelization. Uh, without, I don't know, different GVM executors. And running external GVM executors to start parallel execution is too much for me, for example. And uh, uh, this is the reason why I uh, started to development of our own uh, sub-library uh, for Apache Ignite ML project for hyperparameter tuning too. A brute force search of all possible combinations where each training runs independently can be easily parallelized without synchronization barriers. Uh, for example, in Apache Ignite ML, to run the parallel versions very easy. You need to change parallelism strategy, uh, change it from no parallelism to on default PAL uh, in learning environment builder. Uh, this is a cross validation parameter and it works. No specific uh, parallel code, you know, it's very it's very hard to write uh, parallel code in Java. Uh, you should uh, think about different synchronizer, etc. Uh, and imagine that we have a data set in Ignite's um, cache and we need to run dozens of, of training runs simultaneously. After we call the tune hyperparameters method for search by brute force, the following steps are performed. First of all, cross validation objects generates all possible combinations of parameters. Okay, we have all possible combinations. After that, the cross validation object create a sequence of tasks internally. Of course, you you don't know you didn't see it in the user code, but if you uh, go deeper under the hood, you will see this code. And I need to explain how it works. Uh, tasks are submitted to the internal thread pool, the one main thread by default, and each task are, is executed independently because this is brute force. And each result is posted to the specific shared thread safe cross validation result object. And you you uh, could get access to all of the results and do what you want with them. I don't know, to uh, plot the line on the scatter plot, etc. Uh, inside each task, uh, all parameters are injected into appropriate place of the ML pipeline, and each task constructs a new, um, a new instance of the a cache based data set, you should think about the, that you have one cache, but for each task, the partition based data set, the vectors are created, is created independently. Uh, part of them uh, will be garbage collected before, because uh, all of them located in heap memory, before all execution will finish, but uh, part of them uh, will, con uh, will be like concurrence in the heap memory and sometimes the heap memory could be not enough and you could get a uh, specific situation with that. And uh, every partition uh, of the, as I said, in the cache based data set, uh, you, you could face with different names of that and documentation names, it named like partition based data set and we have a few implementation one other SQL tables, one other cache, ba one other caches, and uh, the popular one is the cache-based data set. Uh, you could find uh, information about it in the Ignite ML documentation. So, this is how grid search works, and the performance, as I said, of grid search quickly um, degrades. Then it searches the best hyperparameter values in the space of dimensions higher than three maybe two if you have very wide range of uh, discrete values and the random search is supported too this is an alternative approach which reduces the number of training grants how it works the ignite ml random search implementation ma makes random jumps and trials on the discrete grid uh, which was generated uh, like in the uh, grid search or like in the param grid to ensure no more than a set number of attempts. For example, if you set only 10 trials, it will make only 10 jumps and it will run only 10 uh, training runs uh, instead of, for example, or 100,000. Of course, uh, the resulting model and the, the best hyperparameters um, in many cases, will not the real best hyperparameters, 
but they could be good enough. Uh, and you could control this parameter. Uh, you could decide how many cluster resource could be utilized. Uh, so hyperparameter tuning, you could increase this value if you could enough memory, if you have enough memory or CPU time. And also random search supports a parallelization. It's uh, Ignite user uh, in the same manner could enable it via changing parallelism strategy, as I said. And this is documented too. And I will, uh, if, if you will have enough time, I will uh, share my uh, idea and uh, present some code with uh, parallel tuning. Uh, so then we compare ML algorithm that are configured by grid search or by random search. We could find that the random search or that the same domain can find models that are as good or better in many cases. Uh, according to theory of probabilities and use a small fraction of the computation time of cluster resources that a grid search requires. And this is very good thing. This is high probability that we can get, uh, like in this slide, uh, we can get into the area of good solution in a small number of tries, uh, but grid search will go and go and go and go and spend a lot of time and resources before it will walk uh, to the yellow uh, area of optimal solutions, for example, into 2D case. So, in reality, if you visualize the Optimiza uh, landscape of optimization problem, for example, for hyperparameter tunings and for many uh, other optimization tasks in neural networks and ML, you could find that parameter space has a high rank. On this slide, it's only uh, three, but uh, in reality, it could have a very high rank, like 10 or 20. And a searching surface looks like a pile of dirty clothes in laundry basket. And as a result, the standard methods of convex or non-convex optimization do not apply at searching for global or local optima. And this is a real problem for hyperparameter optimization. And this is the reason why in the first, why firstly we implemented not uh, Bayesian algorithms, not gradient search, because it doesn't work well on such kind of landscapes. Uh, for such kind of optimization problem, and we prefer genetic uh, algorithms or evolutionary optimization. Maybe you familiar with that. If no, I will remind us a few terms uh, about that. Genetic algorithms, also known also known as evolutionary optimization, they uh, apply natural selection mechanism uh, to solve the optimization problem. Strange, <laughs> genetic algorithms helps us to solve the uh, optimization problem with equations, but it works and works really well. Uh, IgniteML uses the genetic algorithm to tune hyperparameters. And in many cases, the HPO, hyperparameter optimization task, could be formulated as task of discrete optimization. And for example, <laughs> I was studied on the cathedra of uh, uh, theory of optimization my university and it was very popular method and it beats uh, a lot of different approaches and it really works well on in discrete optimization like uh, the space of hyperparameters uh, for example we could decide that the searching of best dna uh, of, be of best genes uh, uh, remind us the searching of best set of hyperparameters. It uses specific uh, genetic operators like selection, evaluation, crossover, mutation, and many others uh, to the population produced as a bunch of different hyperparameter set. We treat uh, hyperparameters like genes of individuals all in the genetic uh, population. In brief, the adoption of genetic algorithms to solve the HPO problems includes the following steps. First of all, the genetic algorithm generates an initial population. In our case, this is a fixed set of hyperparameters, with each hyperparameter set representing an individual in the, <coughs> sorry, in the population. After that, the genetic algorithms uh, evaluates uh, the initial population. It runs trainings and gets the value of the um, metric, and it treats like a value of fitness function. And here, the calculation of fitness function is equal 
to calculation of metric on the training data set here. Uh, also, we could apply a specific selection strategy. Uh, we implemented the most popular one, roulette uh, wheel selection, for example. Uh, the genetic algorithm selects the best individuals from the initial population to become the parents of a new generation. After that, um, uh, the genetic algorithms create the new generation. In our case, this is a new uh, set of hyperparameters, uh, but how? Uh, to produce a new members of the population, it randomly selects two parents uh, from the previous generation, combines genes of them, in our case combines, uh, combines values of hyperparameters hyper to keep good solutions. Uh, according to choosing crossover strategy, we support four uh, different crossover strategy. This is the approach how to exchange genes of two uh, individuals. If user defined uh, mutation probability, the mutation operates randomly. This is like uh, sun radiation uh, on our uh, hyperparameters acts. Uh, a few of the chromosomes or genes of each newly generated child and the mutation operator change the chromosomes to valid values, only valid, not randomly outside of our range from the search space and the genetic algorithm uh, at the end evaluates the new generation that includes the newly generated children. And these previous steps are repeated until the maximum number of generations is reached. For example, we set up uh, 10, only 10 generations will be produced. It defined uh, the real, uh, uh, the higher estimation of our training grants which could be executed. Um, or we could have another condition for convergence, for example, uh, our fitness function are, are not changed from generation to generation. This is another stop criteria. Uh, and let's take a look uh, at a few individuals in the initial population. For example, here, uh, they were generated randomly, like here. Each column or individual contains four number or genes. Suppose that the selection operator selects first and uh, our third individual as parents. The parents here produce two children via, via one-point crossover, and after that mutation operator changes the gene in the first individual. As a result, two children are added to the new generation population. Also, uh, we implemented specific uh, improvement of genetic algorithms, uh, widely known as elitism strategy, we could take the best individual, in our case, this is the best set of hyperparameters from the previous generation, uh, to copy, to take it to the next generation, because, for example, it was better than, than all generated child. And we don't want to, uh, to lose uh, the best solution from the previous generation. Uh, this is a kind of elitist selection. Uh, this strategy guarantees that the quality of the genetic algorithm solution does not decrease from one generation uh, to the next. If we will ignore the LET strategy, for example, we could uh, set uh, the number of uh, ELITA to the zero and we will ignore that. Um, we will not guarantee that our um, uh, high, our metric score uh, does not decrease from one generation to another, and as a result, we could get very good solution. Uh, let's go to the examples. I think we have uh, five minutes for demo. Uh, this is official. It, it will be two examples from the official tutorial, which could be found in example ML tutorial folder. Uh, give me a second to switch between. Uh, slides and idea. I hope. Oh, okay. I see. Uh, in audience views, that you see my working space. Okay. Give a second. This is an example uh, where we load data from the Titanic data set and want to build a model, a good, very good model, which will uh, predict, uh, will survive passenger or not based on different features like P-class, CBSP, part, sex, and Berg, age, fair. We create vectors, uh, define a train test splitter. I will run our example to get the result because it will take time. After that, we define preprocessor, uh, 
to encode text features, uh, input in preprocessor to uh, impute missing values. We have missing values uh, here on minimax scalar preprocessor normalization, our preprocessor to normalize and scale features to uh, build the best model and defines a trainer. Our trainer, decision tree classification trainer, uh, this is very important. We will build, uh, I prefer uh, trees uh, in this task of classification of passengers on the titanic data set. And now we start our tuning hyperparameters code. We define the main object to the cross validation. We define uh, the param grid, as I said. Here we use this here a uh, brute force strategy. It means that uh, 1,000 trainings, training grants will be executed lower, uh, and we will see it in the debug. Uh, we add three hyperparameters. Two of them related to their uh, decision tree classification trainer are one of them. This is a P norm for normalization trainer. It uh, trains two. Uh, we want to choose different norms and maybe we'll be successful with uh, alternative to one or two. They are the most popular. Uh, so we need to combine them in their uh, setter methods, ignite, data cache. Here, we will run it in the parallel. You could see the name of the example, parallel brute force search. And we uh, pass the specific learning environment builder. Here, we set up the parallelism strategy type dependency. Uh, and uh, parallelism strategy now supports uh, only two values on default pool and no parallelism. We switch on one default pool and it will be run in parallel on all available CPUs. I think that in future we will add uh, more operators, more strategies here. For example, if we are running on the limited number of uh, CPU cores, but now it works like uh, is presented. So uh, it, it uses accuracy metric to estimate on the each fault and the training set is uh, split on the three folds each time. A lot of different trainings are run. Uh, it, it, it close to 3,000, in reality 3,000 under the hood. And we call the tune hyperparameters method and we get the cross validation result. And we could get the best values of uh, these hyperparameters and rerun the trainer, rerun the trainer with the best values. Uh, for example, to train on the whole data set, on another data, uh, which, uh, what, what you want. And uh, we uh, print out uh, the best score, uh, the best hyperparameters, the best average score, uh, and evaluate the best model. Okay, let's go to the uh, log to see that we in, we really run 1,000 trainer training grants, uh, and the best hyperparameter were p is equal to 10, max deep is equal to 3, and mean impurity decrease is equal to uh, 0.8. Okay, it's good enough. We have accuracy, it's close to, uh, okay, 1,000 runs, sorry for that. Uh, this is a printed model. Uh, this is a decision tree printed model. The accuracy is enough good to uh, 0.78, okay. That's enough. Let's try to reduce the amount of trainings and uh, let's use the parallel genetic programming approach on the next tab. Here, the same code, it has only different uh, one string, one row here. In param grid, we set up evolution optimization strategy instead brute force. And uh, it acts the same way. We set up the parallelism strategy here, uh, and under the hood, it runs genetic algorithms. And let's run it in parallel. It will take less time, ten time. It, it will act ten, ten time faster. Um, I think we need uh, some time to run one hundred of uh, trainings instead of one thousand. Uh, also, uh, evolution optimization strategy has a few 
uh, different uh, settings too. For example, number of elite chromosomes, number of generations, crossing cover probability, mutation probability, different crossover and selection extraction. You have a very big freedom how to run evolutional optimization in our case. And you could experiment and play in a sandbox that the best are uh, say, the best set of hyper of of parameters for this strategy. Don't use only default. Uh, try to experiment with different. But uh, okay. The training is finished, 10 times faster. Uh, we have more lower accuracy, of course, because we don't brute force all possible cases, but we could see that accuracy is close. We lost only 3% uh, in our accuracy on the small data set, and we have uh, best hyperparameters close uh, to the previous, uh, p is equal 10 to, mean purity decrease close to the previous, but max deep is lower, it's only one, it's very, very, very little, <laughs> very little tree, and it works very good <laughs> in our case. Uh, it uses a special feature to predict uh, correctly. Cool. Uh, okay, the demo is finished. Uh, I think I need a second to switch between sharings. So I hope I hope you see my slides. Okay. And we we, we could go to the last chapter. Uh, but before uh, of course there is much work here for uh, Ignite ML contributors, addition of optimization methods such as Bayesian optimization or gradient-based optimization improvements such as early stopping logic, which is based on condition and uh, could be implemented via callbacks. Uh, all of them on the roadmap, uh, I, I, I'm, I think that a 3.0 version will be shipped with all of them on board, but uh, existing methods already can significantly reduce the number of training grounds and the amount of burned CPU time and occupied memory site. Also, uh, we have uh, one feature which was not covered. Uh, we will um, spend uh, not a uh, very big uh, number of uh, time here. Uh, we'll talk about ensemble learning methods. Ensemble learning builds a set of classifiers in order to enhance the accuracy of a single classifier. Ensemble methods are meta algorithms that combine several machine learning techniques into one predictive model in order to decrease, for example, variance, it's a bagging method, bias, it's a boosting method, uh, or improve predictions. This is a stacking. Let's look at one of them, bagging, first of all. Bootstrap aggregation, also uh, known like bagging, is a machine learning ensemble uh, meta algorithm designed to improve the stability and uh, accuracy of machine learning algorithms. It also reduces variance. It helps to avoid overfitting. For example, you have a standard training uh, data set of size N and begging generates uh, M new training subsets, each of very uh, little size by sampling from uh, D uniformly and V replacements. And then M models are fitted using the M bootstrap samples and combined by averaging uh, the output for regression, for example, or voting for classification case, and each training is distributed and all trainings could be run uh, in parallel. Another technique is boosting. This is a machine learning ensemble, um, another meta algorithm. Uh, it's primarily used uh, for reducing bias and also variance sometimes. And the idea of boosting is another, not train M models in parallel. Let's improve our weak, uh, it's uh, now known like weak learners. It, it means that you could train uh, first logistic regression, use it to try the second logistic regression or linear regression and uh, build uh, them, uh, combine them into the strong, good model, which uh, evaluates perfectly. The idea of boosting is to train weak learners, as I said, sequentially, and uh, each training is distributed, but as a result, the models couldn't be, could, couldn't be trained in parallel. And each trying, each of these models in sequence, trying to correct the previous models. How it works, for example, uh, let's look on the gradient boosted trees, like here. Um, gradient boosted trees and ensemble of decision trees. 
you could build different ensembles, but this is ensemble of decision trees. And the most common version of the algorithm, uh, in each iteration, we add a tree, uh, like on this slide. And each iteration, when a new tree is added, which is trained on labels, uh, please attention, that result from only uh, errors made by uh, the existing ensemble of trees. Uh, it means that it trying to classify only wrong labels. It learns only on errors. It's very interesting example how uh, the AI uh, and uh, machine learning acts. The final point of the presentation is stacking, as I said. Stacking involves training or learning algorithm to combine the predictions of several other learning algorithms. It gives us ability to build complex architecture of a uh, uh, sequence of different models. It's very popular, for example, in Kaggle to win the competitions. Uh, first of all, uh, all, all of our algorithms are trained using the available data. For example, you train three or four decision trees. Uh, then a combiner algorithm here, this is logistic regression, is trained to make a final prediction using predictions from the low level, from the uh, decision trees. It, it learn, uh, learned on the predictions. Uh, I want to add one note about possible parallelization. Of course, all trainings on the low level, I mean three or four, uh, like here, three. Uh, decision trees could be run in parallel, but of course the final level, for example, uh, logistic regression here couldn't be running in parallel with uh, previous models. It should wait the result from the previous layer to be uh, executed. So the code is very simple. Uh, here you define the two trainers, uh, for example, with different uh, hyperparameters, with different max deep, and aggregator like logistic regression trainer, um, which will be a trainer on the second level. And we could combine uh, all of them, uh, put uh, two first trainers uh, to the stacked uh, vector dataset trainer, and uh, await the result uh, from the aggregator. Uh, we have uh, the same example in the tutorial too. You could train uh, or run staking model, for example, in the Titanic tutorial or on another data set which are shipped with IgniteML um, in supported data sets. But that's all. I hope, dear attendee, uh, that you now have an idea of how hyperparameter optimization works in IgniteML. Uh, in this presentation, we will stay step by step uh, through hyperparameter optimization Apache Ignite ML, as I said, and existing model methods uh, can mm, significantly reduce the number of training runs, of course, and the amount of burn CPU time and occupied memory size. And sample method, this is another approach which can significantly improve quality of your model and could be parallelized too. And you could combine both of them in really pretty cool training. Uh, you could train uh, and validate and tune hyperparameters of very, very complex models uh, here. And uh, all of our execution will be distributed and parallelized where, e where it is possible. Uh, okay, that's all. Follow me on Twitter, Medium. I'm going to publish a few articles about uh, HPO topic, about different uh, topics from IgniteML on GitHub, on YouTube. Uh, there are a few uh, English videos there. And if you have any questions or suggestions about IgniteML, feel free to contact me via uh, this email. Okay, if you have any suggestions of HPO, uh, don't hesitate to contact me too. Thank you. Thank you.